worthy of the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, come, let us adore him. Alleluia. inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
God, who showest to them that are in error the light of thy truth, to the intent that they may return into the way of righteousness. Grant unto all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may avoid those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without hand. beginning at the 16th verse. At that 
that time, Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, What is this that he saith? A little while. We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said, A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall turn into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish, for the joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of our love, light of light, very God, very God, begotten of God made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation. Church on this third Sunday after Easter. It's wonderful to have you all here worshiping with us and all those who are joining us also online as well. Uh, just a few announcements, some opportunities to uh, serve the wider community, specifically with our uh, outreach partner, the Living Vine. Uh, so we have, first and foremost, the work day, the Living Vine, which is coming up Saturday, April 27th at 9 a.m. Uh, this is open both to men and women of the parish. Uh, th there will be some beautification happening. We will be cleaning out some old things uh, and installing some beautiful new uh, shrubbery. And so we do need people to sign up. We're looking for 20 helpers. I think we have about six so far. So if the Holy Spirit is stirring your hearts right now, please do uh, reach out uh, to, to uh, either, um, you can just email me because uh, unfortunately we don't have the email there for that. So email me and I will put you in touch with Men of St. John's for that. There's also another uh, opportunity to serve if, if uh, your, your charism is more in playing golf. You can play golf and also serve uh, the, the Lord by helping raise money for the Living Vine. That's also there on page 10. Uh, links for the Living Vine, that's on May 13th. Uh, so do sign up for that. That's, uh, there's a URL to sign up online there. And then finally, um, it, we have a general meeting of the women of St. John's coming up. 
Uh, if you don't know, if you are a woman and a member of St. John's, you're automatically a member of the Women of St. John's. And so we encourage all of you uh, to show up and be a part of this, to let your voice be heard, to know the wonderful things that the Women of St. John's are up to, both in the parish and in the wider community. So that's on page 10 as well. There's even a QR code where you can sign up online, and that will be May 9th, 5.30 p.m. at the Green Meldrum House. Uh, some more wonderful things going on. Uh, do pay attention to all the announcements, but I will ask you, uh, actually really quickly, uh, an update. Father Dunbar told me he's having a wonderful time, that he has uh, seen some things in Italy that he's been reading about for 30 years and finally seen in person. So do pray. He'll be coming back uh, home uh, this week, and so do pray for Traveling Mercies for him, and I'm sure he'll be happy to see you all and have many wonderful stories to tell. Please stand for the invocation. <coughs> May the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. May God add his blessing to the hearing of this word. As I prepared my sermon for this morning, I found myself asking this question. Why are we reading this passage from John on the third Sunday after Easter? And what were those responsible for ordering of these readings thinking about? The gospel this morning is the last part of Jesus' farewell discourse in the gospel of John begins with the 14th chapter and ends with the 16th chapter. He washed Peter's feet, giving them the great commandment to love one another, broken bread with them, gathered and broke, passed the cup around, named his betrayer, and promised them that his Holy Spirit would come and, and, and be with them and guide them and direct them. And finally, he talks to them about his departure, and hence my question, why now? Why am I as confused as the disciples apparently were by listening to his, I'm leaving, but I'll be back. But when I come back, I'll leave again. You know, Jesus caught them on that because they were whispering among themselves trying to figure out what he was saying, what he meant. Let that be a lesson to you. You may think things, but Jesus knows what you're thinking too. It really is quite simple. The answer came to me. Go, go figure. Glory, hallelujah. And it's quite simple when you think about it. It all has to do with the resurrection of Jesus and the life of the community of faith, the church, afterwards. It has to do with you and with me, here in the here and now, and our living into that resurrection that happened so very long ago that continues day to day restoring wholeness and newness of life to all of our lives, and indeed, to the life of the world. Now we have to remember, for instance, that there was probably a little more than 500 people who actually witnessed the risen body of the Lord Jesus Christ after his resurrection. And it is through these witnesses of these individuals, some skeptical, some fearful of telling anyone through the history, that the faith of the church, the body of Christ, is continue to manifest itself and continue the gospel pro proclamation until Jesus returns to judge the quick and the dead. It was all a reflection and a witness, and those who believe the witness pass that witness on from generation to generation. So much so, here we sit today because people believed in the early witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It has also important to note here that whatever the nature of the resurrection event, it did not generate perfect faith, even in those who experienced it firsthand. It is not to angels or perfect believers, but to the worshiping community of disciples, to those who fell at his feet and worshiped him, to whom the world mission of proclamation and witness of the resurrection was entrusted. He entrusted that each to us as well, who have been baptized and grafted into the body of Christ, 
to whom the good news is given. You and I, by our inheritance, by our baptism into the life of Christ, as the members of the living organism of the body of Christ, are to continue the witness of the resurrection. Oh, some of us may be skeptical. Some may scratch our heads. Certainly, most of us are fearful talking about the resurrection and what happened to Jesus and what happens to me when I am engaged with him. But it's still, nevertheless, our responsibility. We are the ones who take the message to the world. We are part of that fabric of salvation history that God has wrought amongst his people. Will it be easy? No, never is. If it was, everybody would be doing it, right? Will there be sacrifices? Yes. There will be sorrow, often. And in some instances, life has been lost because of this message. Jesus' own notwithstanding. Therefore, Jesus uses the metaphor of a woman in labor to describe the sorrow of the disciples and how they will experience. Now, ladies, I admit, I have no idea what it was like. Believe me, not one man can, apart from modern day thinking. But I did stand there and hold my hand of my beloved Sally as she gave birth to our three children, two at once. That was interesting. I saw her anguishing in labor, the tears coming from her eyes from the pain and the struggle, being tired from the pushing and the pulling, holding her hand and hearing the wonderful words of, why did you do this to me? What were you thinking? Don't ever do that again. I was there. But then, then, for those of you who have had that blessing, the child, this new life, this new human, births forth through her legs, all slimy and red, and yelling and screaming, and tears begin to fall from our eyes, so happy about that wonderful moment that we were now responsible for a new life that God has gifted us with. All the tears, the pain, the doubt were past. We had to look forward to taking care of this new life. Those of us who have had that privilege give thanks to God. Once that infant makes the first noise, that first cry, joy overcomes our pain. Our attention is immediately drawn to the new life and the nurture of that life. Jesus assures his disciples that he will see them again in a little while, so their joy may be made complete. Just as Jesus' victory over the world could not be effected without his death, so also believers who share in Jesus' victory will be accompanied by suffering, sorrow, and pain. But so too is his promise to us in the here and now that he will return to us and our joy will be complete. We have been given a gift of that good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. We have been endowed with the Holy Spirit to give us the strength and the courage to carry that message forward, to live faithful and obedient lives, to overcome the vicissitudes of this life, trusting in God, and know that he will lead us into all righteousness. With this farewell discourse does not promise everything's going to be okay. What the farewell discourse does promise is that the movement from the present now, present sorrow to the future, joy is possible. And indeed, it's guaranteed as a result of Jesus' victory in his hour of his death. It is this guarantee, the sure, unshakable confidence in Jesus' victory over the world and the peace that that victory makes possible that provides the grounds for Christian hope. Hope is not idle speculation about the future, about what might be or what might happen, although today's notions of hope reduces hope to that, for sure, in that range of speculation. Rather, Christian hope is the conviction grounded in the victory of Jesus' death and his resurrection, that one's present and future belong to God and that all things are possible. The measure of what is possible then in the present is grounded in Christ's victory. We do not have to be afraid of death because Jesus has defeated it. He has 
rented asunder. And the measure of what is to be hoped for is promised by Christ's resurrection and his promise to return in a little while. Then, both the present and future are defined by Jesus' death and resurrection and are held together in a dynamic balance. When we live in hope, then, our present moves towards the promises and possibilities of the future. And the future transforms our present sorrows and seemingly impossibilities of our present. Christian hope allows us to overcome that. Hope is always on the other side of despair. This is why Jesus uses the metaphor of a woman in childbirth to overcome those difficulties, to know through that difficulty you will be given a new life, a new hope. Jesus has conquered the world. Take heart and believe. As a community of faith, we are invited to enter into that eschatological domain, that future hope of our life, to embrace God's future that has been open to us in the present through the death and resurrection of Jesus. It is through his death and resurrection that he's opened the gates to the kingdom of heaven for all who would believe. Indeed, and ye now therefore have sorrow, but will I see you again? And your heart will rejoice, and you, your joy no man can taketh away from you. Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing.
offered to the praise and glory of Almighty God through Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, who has made manifest to us who are gathered members of his very body, trusting that he will be with us on the pilgrim way, even in our sorrows and challenges, as we journey in hope for that joy that no man can take away. Of your charity, I your prayers for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole saint, Christ's Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to live a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time and previously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and lead thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty oh God, with great mercy, have promised forgiveness of sins to all those with hearty repentance and true faith for unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ hath unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, 
which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. 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 And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and glory forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed in his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sin of the world.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in thy holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high.
upon his throne of glory in heaven and in the most blessed sacrament of the altar and in the hearts of all his faithful people on earth. And may the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace and may light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. Amen.